um, quite a bit of <coughs> usability things like the suggest, like uh, instant previous and all the, the new features. Um, so, but you know, the, the biggest question, and I mean, in, in 211, um, obviously we had we only had one topic, which, which was Panda. But I think the biggest question actually is, um, why in the world do they change that much? And you know, why is that um, that they try to to change the algorithm? I would I would say there's just one answer. Google sucks. It's just it's just my point on that. Um, because you know, in all seriousness, I mean, they, they do quite a good job, and probably it's better than than the others, and probably better than Yahoo did in the past. I'm not so sure about Bing anyway, anymore, but I think um, that being said, they know pretty well that you know, from a user perspective, they don't really deliver. Um, what users want to have, at least not in all cases. So that's probably why they have to keep changing, why they have to update, and you know have that kind of high frequency uh, to stay on top of the game. And that being said, um, I guess we're going to have some fun today to see what we can get out of that. And um, you know, just briefly about me, um, I do SEO for quite a bit now, and we mainly do SEO, we mainly do SEO for WordPress, and, and you know the other thing is link building, and that fits pretty well if you build up um, you know WordPress networks with uh, with links. So. Um, yeah, it's just and another thing, and that's the third and last warning for today. And there's going to be some 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 links in there, and um, if you go to that URL, or I guess we're going to publish the slides later on, anyways. But then you can get the slide deck, and you have all the URLs in there, so you don't have to write everything down. Um, I think that's a good start for them. And I have to do it pretty fast because we started late, and uh, we have like 60 slides to jump in, and um, it's going to be a, a road trip, so to say. Alrighty, first thing, um, WordPress setup. I mean, the, the, the usual thing, and you know, probably know that when you use WordPress, uh, getting that thing uh, downloaded, set up, that's, that's pretty easy. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna jump into the optimized settings in a bit, but the main the main or the fun part comes in when you have to replicate that, right? Because that's that's the painful process. You have to do it over and over and over again. Um, there's a, call, a, a thing called XCloner. That thing is pretty nice because what, because what what it does is basically if you have that WordPress set up at one, at one domain or one URL or whatever, um, you also can put in uh, XCloner, which is like a, a plugin, so the process, the process is the usual one. And then what it does, you put in like the FTP data and the, the MySQL data, and that thing basically copies it to the next and the next and the next and the next server. So it's going to be a one-click installation with all the settings and all the optimized stuff you did at one point. So that's going to be starting to scale then because you don't have to you know, redo it and redo it and redo it and spend like 30 minutes on each of the installations. You just have to do one click. So you really should check that thing out. Um, and then, well, if you have like 100 or 1,000 or whatever kind of different sites running on WordPress, um, the next thing which really sucks big time is maintenance, is maintenance, right? So updating those things. I mean, we have like, I don't know, every 10 days coming out an update, a new version. That's, you just can't keep track of that. You would have like three, four people just updating WordPress installation. I mean, that can't be the goal. So, um, manage uh, WP is a, is a service where you basically um, where you log in your your installation URLs um, and the login credentials, and that thing can basically do mass mass updates, so to say, right? Yeah, here saying now, okay, I don't want to provide my credentials, I don't want to provide my URLs because it's my network. I'm with you on that. Um, but the good thing is that thing can be also self-installed, basically. You can put it on your server, and you have a, so to say, well, like a management server, where you can put in all your other um, WordPress installations, and then update from there. And the, and the nice thing is, you log into that panel, you see, okay, well, these 500 WordPress needs an update. You click one time, you get 500 WordPress updates. Wow, it's quite nice, actually. And you can also do that with, with plugins, you can do that with themes, you can do it with almost everything in WordPress. So. Um, that, that, at that point, we really start scaling. I mean, yes, it's not for free. I don't, don't ask me the prices, but um, it's, it's well worth the money. If you're, if you're running five figures and higher, um, in case of domains, uh, you don't want to live without that thing. Um, there is like a, a midway solution, um, which doesn't cost anything. Um, if, you, if you look at the URL structure, the WordPress update URLs um, are always the same. It's always like the domain name, and then it's like the same path. So if you would set up um, like a browser uh, favorites folder and put in all the installations, uh, you could open you know all the bookmarks of that folder at once. Mm -hmm. If you're locked in, then those updates will run through as well. But you know usually the browser crashes and that stuff, so it doesn't work with like a huge load of, um, of domains. 
But anyways, that's that's I think that's the scenario if you if you want to scale on single site WordPress installations, um, how you could well save quite a bit of time. Um, the other way, um, WordPress multi-user. Um, back in the days, they had like two different kind of how to say software branches. Basically, the one thing was WordPress, the other one was WordPress uh, multi-user. And the multi-user thing was um, always outdated and always didn't have the same features as with the uh, as with the core WordPress. So that sucked. But they changed it. And now you can again just get the WordPress copy, um, edit the config file a bit. There's like just one line which needs to put in, which you, which you need to put in, um, which basically says, okay, I don't want to, I don't want to have a single site, but a multi-site installation. Multi-site means that as a default, you could have on one WordPress setup like various subdomains or various subfolders being treated as single block installations. But well, as we know, that's usually not the case because we want to have multiple, you know, top-level domains. Um, there's a plug plugin called the uh, domain mapping plugin. Um, if you get that and then install it, and then yeah, again, it's like a little manual work. You have to copy a file um, to, to the content folder. Then you basically are uh, good to go. Um, now the config change, and then basically the only thing you need to do is just go to your name servers, put in the IP addresses, and you can map basically an unlimited amount of domains to that WordPress installation, and you have them all in one admin panel, which is pretty nice, though. Um, and there's also this is basically the same tool as the as the X cloner. There's clone sites for WordPress multi-user, and then you can clone within the the multi-user setup. So as you probably might have guessed by now, I'm gonna be a lazy guy. Uh, I don't wanna like redo that shit all the time. So um, I just go set up one site, and again I'm gonna go in the settings in a bit, and then you just clone within that installation, which is pretty nice. Um, the third thing is this kind of a, how to say a hybrid, so to say. So what you do is, um, again, you just do the, the multi-user setup um, as shown before, but with the difference that you, you don't serve that, that multi-user server to the users, but rather go and export that stuff um, to static HTML files. So the nice thing with that is um, you don't have to care about maintenance, the maintenance and you won't gonna get hacked. I'm going to have a bit, little bit about security later on because WordPress and security is also like a, yeah, it's going to be a tough topic, so to say. But um, what you can do is you can, if you have that multi-user setup, you could use something like HTTrack and get all the, the WordPress sites, like each of those domains basically export as HTML, including like the CSS and the JavaScript and stuff. Put that to the server like with a, something like we use LFTP, which is pretty easy. It's like a command, command line client where you just you know, copy from the management, like the staging server, to another one. And the good thing with that is you're almost free in using any provider in the world because you don't need PHP anymore, you don't need MySQL to serve those sites just about getting a lot of web spaces um, where you can where you basically have a lot of or like an unlimited amount of, of IP addresses and put that someplace and that's good. You don't worry about updating, you don't worry about anything because the site is just static anymore or any at all. But the thing the thing with that is and that's a downside probably so that's always the question of what you want to do with the sites. You don't have any kind of dynamic elements, right? You don't have comments, you don't have like ratings or whatever you want to need. So you have to see what kind of scenario you're going to use the site in. But if it's just for setting links, I mean, no one does that, but if it's just for that, then it's probably um, a good idea to put it on a static way. Um, otherwise, you, you might need a bit of new stuff. Um, and yeah, just on the side, not we skip that. Uh, who of you does know uh, Mr. Joost? Joost Tavak? Can you say? It's not that much. Come on. Okay. Um, so back in the days, we had like, I don't know, 10, 15 plugins just to take care of. of uh, SEO issues in WordPress, and uh, Yoast did um, an amazing job to put it to put together a plugin um, which does almost everything in SEO. So if you if you do WordPress and you want to have the site optimized, make sure that you go for that one. Um, and as you as you can see probably from the, from the sidebar, um, there is quite a lot of stuff in there. So there's almost no need for for any any other plugin. And the good thing is, it almost runs out of the box. Um, and does mainly fix all the issues WordPress has. I mean, WordPress in general is pretty well optimized, but um, if you put that on top, um, you're almost also almost perfect. I just want to walk you very briefly to, uh, through a couple of those settings um, and make sure that if you do that, as shown with the setup before, that you do that beforehand. You just do it one time, set it up, and then you can, with the xCloner, replicate it. So um, the one thing, um, if you're using like static sites, um, which won't get updated that often, um, make sure that you um, that you disable those those date snippets, right? Because otherwise you want to just want to have outdated or you just have outdated content in those domains, which doesn't look so good. 
especially not in the meta descriptions. Um, so I, I would I wouldn't use it if you if you just use those for for link building. Um, and the, the, the other thing, um, usually when you build up networks, I wouldn't I wouldn't use I wouldn't use um, webmaster tools and the Bing tools and that kind of stuff at all. But you know sometimes if you need it for debugging and stuff. So if you do it, make sure that you know you don't put all of those in one account. It's probably not a good idea. So just if you have to use it, create a single account and just then you can put it in there and then um, the authentication kind of process is pretty pretty straightforward. Um, the other thing, um, I guess, all of hopefully everyone knows by now that, that page titles still are one of the uh, more important things in SEO. Um, that you need a page title for the homepage and stuff is, should be pretty clear. But the, the other nice thing about the plugin is that you could use uh, templates and, and variables, right? So if you're if you're on that site later on and you scroll down, there's a there's a huge list with uh, all the different kind of dynamic elements uh, which you can use and, and, and basically you know um, make sure that. For example, with, a, with using the, the, the title of the post within the description, you get the highlight in the search results, right? So really think about what kind of content makes sense from a user perspective in this case, and then try to use the variables to, to, dynamic, to, to dynamicize basically the process um, that you don't have to do that by hand for every page, right? So just set up the template once, and then you're good to go. Um, another pretty important thing I'd say is, is um, indexation rules, because WordPress, um, with a default setup, tries to, or well, not tries, but generates quite a bit of duplicate content. Um, that's that's not so nice, but it's going to be like three, <coughs> okay, four clicks uh, to fix that. So the one thing, what you won't, what you won't need is, is um, you know, sub-paged um, archives and taxonomies. Um, so make sure that you don't get indexed those, of those guys. Um, if you're just running with a single author, which is, which is mostly the case, um, if you do, you know, large scale a network because you don't want to go with editorial kind of stuff. <laughs> Then probably like this, uh, like disable the. I mean, you could you could disable the. That's an, that's another part, but you could also just no index the authors, and that's fine. Um, Date-based archives usually generate just duplicate content versus categories, and then the last decision decision is up to you. Do you do you do categories or do you do you do tags, right? But usually you don't need both. If you do, then you probably have to try to come up with a with a difference. Um, on, a, on a content kind of level, right? So you'd need a description for a tag page, and you'd need a description for a, for a category page, just because the listings in those are usually the same, right? And you don't want to have those exact same pages being indexed, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, as I just said, I mean, you could also completely disable those. Um, I prefer disabling over no indexing, because um, if there are sites, well, which the crawler don't need, then usually the users there's also no need for those, and then you could just strip them out completely. Um, what else? Um, the head section of WordPress, well, depending on the theme, is usually a little bit, um, I would say, overcrowded with uh, some things you won't need. So, um, just you know, RSD links, manifest links, short links, and all this stuff it just blows up the source code. So, um, uh, make sure you get rid of them as well. URL structure, well, usually it works pretty good. I mean, obviously you have to enable like the like the permalink kind of thing in, in the WordPress settings. But uh, what I what I really don't like is that you know category thing in the URL. So you could you know you could move that out because from a conversion perspective, from a click through perspective, it doesn't help you at all. So just get rid of it. And then um, one thing that WordPress I don't know why, but which is still an issue if you if you request a tag page, um, you could do that with and without the slash at the end, right? So that's duplicate content. And um, so in that case, make sure that you just you know put the one checkbox and you have a redirect with the one version and the other one works. That's pretty easy as well. And um, last one, which is kind of I don't know, I didn't know that about, or I did know did not know about that before I saw it in the plugin. Um, if you if you upload an attachment with a with a multimedia kind of function, um, they store it like as a post, and that means that you have a single URL for each of those. Um, Attachments which, which you uploaded, which means that usually you would generate a lot of URLs which you don't want because you don't want to have the you know the attachment as a single one being indexed, but you want to have it on that page where you embedded it, right? So in this case, um, yeah, another checkbox and you're good to go. Um, what else? Scraping content. Well, I heard that some people try to do that. Um, not saying that I do that, but uh, the thing is. Um, there's a there's a function for RSS um, content where you could just easily um, for each of those things that goes through the RSS feed um, add um, a nice backlink to the uh, to each of those posts, right? So if someone scrapes your content and is dumb enough to do that and not you know removes the uh, 
the link you always, well, every scraper generates a backlink, so to say, which is pretty nice. I take everyone like every link I get, so in this case, uh, we just you know, just just put in the the variable with a with a block link, uh, a post link, sorry, and you're good to go, and you're automatically for each of those um, get a link in that. It's pretty nice then. Um, well, that's that's almost for the um, for the SEO kind of plugins, but we still have some more. Um, Word, WordPress itself is not that good in you know interlinking um, posts with each other. You just have the you know the next and the previous button, um, which doesn't make too much sense. Sense, so you could try out the, uh, as the name said, yet another related post plugin where you get like um, you know related posts linked with you, with each other, which is pretty nice. Um, Backups, so uh, yeah, it could be a good idea to have a, a working copy of all of those. Um, so there's um, back WP up, which is pretty nice. What I especially like on that is um, the one thing, um, it backups database as well as files. So almost everything, including also user uploads, including themes, including plugins, so everything. And what you also can do, um, I don't know if you guys heard about Dropbox, I guess so. Who doesn't know Dropbox? Okay like a cloud file storing service, so to say. And um, that thing can also you know, put that back up to a Dropbox, or well, for sure also on, a, on an FTP server, which is, which is uh, the other way. You just have a shared hosting somewhere and put uh, like a root server or whatever, and put the stuff um, someplace safe. But the good thing is you set that up one time, and then you, you X-clone it to the other side, and you always have you know, um, a backup of every installation running, and you could like, easily restore um, from that as well. Um, if you're running European markets, or like especially Germany in this case, um, but also some others, if you have like this, you know, entities and, and not so nice looking characters in the URLs, um, try that one. Um, it removes and normalizes basically URL swags. Um, redirection, as the name says, is also pretty self-explaining, I guess. If you're moving around content, um, or also if you're restoring content um, on expired domains and a couple of URLs, couple of URLs won't be used, um, you could do like um, the redirection thing and then probably set up you know, internal redirects. Um, it's also like pretty nice that it has a function which logs basically 404 errors. So um, if you have um, errors coming up, you could just one click and then 301 redirect them. Um, it looks pretty nice. And um, the last one, and my, my favorite one, um, for um, cloaking links um, and pretending not to be an affiliate, um, the Eclipse Link Cloaker. Um, the one thing which is pretty nice about that one is that um, almost every other other plugin I know just cloaks within posts and pages, and that sucks big time because usually I, I want to have some stuff in the sidebar, stuff in the header, stuff in the footer, and I don't want to bother about you know having to put those things manually on the redirect. It's just too much work, right? So I just want to copy the banner code, put it on the side, and good to go. And that is what this thing can do. Um, besides of you know that it can as well as you decide either cloak all the outbound links or just cloak the ones you, you, you mark, so it's up to you. But that works pretty nice, but it's uh, well, it's not completely free, but I think it's worth the money. Mm. Yeah, what else? Ah, okay, this one. Um, if you do the social stuff, um, I'm not the link guy, but um, if you do the social stuff and, and share the content and you have problems with, uh, with the wrong sharing images, and that's what that plugin does, so basically on a post level, um, you can easily specify then which image will be used um, to appear in, in Facebook and, and all the other kind of social networks. Ready? Um, that. Um, WordPress security. Um, it's a pain in the ass, mm. honestly. Yeah. Um, we had so much trouble with, uh, with hacked, work, hacked WordPresses, and um, that's, that's no fun. Um, so we spent quite a while on, on at least trying to figure out um, well, what, what can be done to to get rid of most of the of the, of the usual stuff and then the, the, the hacking attempts, so to say, um, coming in because you know the, the most most of the thing that's happened is usually like automated kind of script requests on, on URLs that are on the server, like on the on the installer script and you know on, on the JavaScript folder, that kind of stuff. So, um, I mean, the obvious the obviously things the obvious things we can do obviously is you know. If you, if you install plugins and themes and you don't use them, get rid of them, right? Because it's, it's not only it's not only so much because um, <coughs> you're using them, but also because of performance, right? WordPress, you know, if you have it in the folder and you have 20 plugins deactivated, WordPress reads through all those files. 
no matter if they're active or not. So what you're not using, please um, remove it. And um, the other one is easy. Well, should be clear, but you have you have to get you have to stay updated. Um, and if you well, another thing that might be helping a little bit at least is a plugin called the Update Notifier. And um, we have a, like a catch-all email address, you know, where we get all the notifications on all the blocks. Um, and all the WordPresses basically um, on all the outdated components, and then you can just one click from within that um, from within that email on the update URL and can well at least keep them up to date. That's pretty nice. And again, I mean, I mentioned the, the managed WP, um, which can that do on a on a, on a on a larger scale, so to say. But that's not so much. I mean, that's that's the easy thing. Um, some plugins um, as well. I mean, there's um, something called um, antivirus for WordPress, um, which basically um, does a scan on the templates and it tries to figure out if there is, you know, um, malicious inclusions like um, base 64 characters and, and you know all that hidden kind of stuff that get gets usually injected um, on a template level. And you could do that on a daily base, get an email report, and um, at least know if something goes wrong. Because I mean, protecting is one thing, but if it's too late, you at least want to know about it. Right? Um, the other thing, um, it's called Secure WordPress. Um, I don't want to run through all the checkboxes here, but the, main, the most important thing is um, it, it blocks a huge load of you know these kind of uh, URL requests with, with um, broken characters and, and, and you know all those those long URLs with basically, basically exploit content. And also, and that's the other thing, it removes all the WordPress version numbers, right? The version numbers not only not only as shown with a meta tag, but also in within CSS, in within JavaScript, and all the other files. Because most of the plugins just do it and just remove the the, um, the thing in the header, which is which is not enough. And um, another thing, yeah, you have like a nice control panel where you can see what you what basically have to do. But the, the more important thing, and that's usually the biggest issue we have, um, is file permissions, right? So um, make sure that your file permissions really match with those ones just needed, right? Because otherwise, you usually have basically too much access for on files or on folders. And it's pretty pretty easy then, you know, from externally place content on that server. But if you have the if you have the permission permissions set right, um, then well, for all the plugins or for all the WordPresses we got hacked, we have the wrong file permissions. Let's put it on that point. It's, it's pretty straightforward. Right. Um, themes, theme frameworks. Uh, the first thing please that you never should do is Google on WordPress or Google for WordPress themes. Download the first one that you find. Even worse, free WordPress themes, install those. They are always are, well, they are bad, that's for sure, but they have like, you know, those embedded kind of links in there. They usually load some malicious JavaScript. So I would never recommend, even though it's nice, I would never recommend going free when it comes to when it comes to WordPress themes. Um, it just doesn't work. It's just it's just not worth the trouble. Especially I brought just some some suggestions. Um, there's so much, there's so much, well, so-called premium themes, which are not that expensive, um, where you surely won't have that problem. And that's just not worth it, right? So there's Theme Forest, um, there's Woo themes, um, there is simple themes, and um, allergen themes. And well, the other way, what you could also do is theme frameworks, right? Um, Thesis is, I guess, um, pretty popular. Um, they have not only like the, the, the theme itself, but also a lot of you know um, like widgets and stuff directly embedded with that thing. So you have like a slideshow and stuff. You don't have to care about you know how that you need to basically customize. You can just take it together and, and it works. What I what I prefer a little more is, um, is called Studio Press. Um, they have almost the same stuff than than Jesus has. Um, they are very well optimized and they, they bring like a, a package of around 40 themes basically so that you are also free from a you know um, graphical point of view so to say. Um, content, well I heard that from time to time you might need content if you build networks. Um, the one thing and just an example text broker, I don't know if you heard about those guys. They have a they have a WordPress plugin. Um, so if you put that in your WordPress you could you know start the text orders just directly from within that WordPress. And you also get that text resubmitted through that uh, to that specific WordPress installation, which is pretty nice because you don't have to worry about someone, you know, getting the text, copy that to the WordPress, publish it. You can, you know, basically automate the whole process in within that WordPress. There's also 
Uh, I think text provider is the other one that can do that. Um, but if it comes to scaling content, mass scaling content, that's a pretty nice idea, I guess. Um, you know about that, right? Archive.org? Right, okay. That was the BBC in 1989, by the way. Which is pretty ugly, I guess. Um, I don't know if you ever tried to restore content from archive.org and put it on one domain, but um, I have to admit, it's going to be, it's, it's a painful process, so to say, because you have, you know, you have to copy that HTML file, you have to, you have to change, you have to change, uh, like, the URLs and stuff, and, yeah, well, that's, it's too much work for me. Anyways, there is a tool, um, as you would have guessed by now, that is uh, basically the one you, you're looking for. It's called Warwick. Um, just a quote, Warwick is a free utility for reconstructing, reconstructing and recovering a website when a backup is not available. But that's true, I don't have a backup, but I want a content, right? So um, what the tool can do basically is, um, there's a download, your, download URL in there, um, or you just Google Warwick and find it. Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a small Perl script, right? And you just put in like warwick.pl and then the URL you want to have recovered. And what you get is like a nice HTML file which you can put on the server. Okay, now I guess it's not going to work if you have like a, a huge domain with 100 or 1,000 or 10,000 sites. The good thing is they have an option which is called complete recovery. Nice. So um, if you do recursive and complete, you get the content from a domain. And you could even do it a bit better because sometimes you know, there might be a redesign, and you get an old version, so you can also specify the date. Say, so, okay, I want a BBC content from 1989, um, and publish that. That's pretty nice, actually. And don't ask me about the legal perspective. I don't care, honestly, but um, that works pretty nice. That's the URL again. It's the same as the other one, just with a short one. So um, you should try that out. And please, please, don't tweet about it. It would be nice. Um, so pitfalls as well. Um, the obvious ones, Google AdSense, Google Analytics, if you use those on a network um, with all the same IDs, it's probably not a good idea. Um, there's not too much alternatives to, to AdSense. I mean, if you want to use AdSense because you have to you know, redo all the accounts and they just, they usually just allow one per company, so that's, that sucks a bit, a little bit, but who cares about AdSense anyways. Um, analytics, I guess there's good replacements like uh, Get Clicky, like Bwig and stuff, so I wouldn't, I wouldn't use the Google tools on those domains at all. Um, affiliate codes and IDs is the same, but if, you, if you're going with a cloaker, that's fine, and you don't have the IDs in the source code. Um, that's, that's a thing I see happen quite often. Um, if you build up a network, and every, every site on that domain, or the other way around, if you have a, if you have a domain and every, every, every domain has like 10 sites, and each of those 10 sites has 30 or 300 words of content, that's probably a pattern as well, right? So if you, if you scale on text, make sure that you, that you don't create those patterns, right? It doesn't make sense. Um, it's not normal to have, a, to have 100 domains, 10 pages each, 300 words each. That's just, right? And um, also markup and themes. Um, <coughs> I know it's nice to have one that works, but um, markup is also, or might also be a pattern. Um, so, so try to, you know, not always use the same. Um, from an SEO perspective, um, when, building, when building those networks, make sure that you don't overdo it. Um, you know, all the kind of advanced techniques, so to say, um, they're not good on those sites because you don't want to raise any kind of you know, awareness to those, to those domains and, and you don't want to you know, do the no-follow because it just, it just looks so much SEO, yeah? You don't, you don't, want, to, you don't want to have that. Um, also, you don't want to interlink all those domains with each other because otherwise it's pretty, pretty, pretty simple to, you know, to understand which domains belong to the network. We had that webmaster tools thing earlier. Um, if you're selling interlinks, again, you don't do that. But if you're selling links, um, do it from within content, right? Don't do like the footer blocks and the sidebar stuff. Don't make it too easy um, just to detect it on a, you know, on a, on a large or automated scale. And in general, um, yeah. Just don't make those guys look too stupid, um, because otherwise um, it's not that good. A um, little bit about expired domains, and um, you know, because they are pretty nice as a as a base on building up those networks, because you don't want to, you know, build links for all of those domains, right? So um, the first thing, and 
where to get them, right? I mean, there are a couple of there are a couple of brokers out there where you can just you know just buy them or back order them. Expired is, is ours, so I have to put it first for sure. Um, there's also like Snap Names, um, there is Pool.com, there is Namejet, and also others um, where you basically can place back orders on domains that, that are going to expire and um, or that have a nice link profile, and which can be used for that. I'm sure there are, there are way more than those, just a couple of examples. Um, but there might be other ways um, as well. So first of all, a little bit about um, how to select and how to, well, which, which ones, which ones to, to, to use. Um, so going exotic is totally a good idea because, I mean, Google, as we all know, is a, is a registrar, right? So they do have the access to, to, um, to the owner data, um, especially for ComNet and org domains. That being said, um, for the other ones, that's not the case. Which means that if you go for, you know, all the ugly stuff on the right hand side, like Andorra and the others, I've never heard before, <laughs> That's, that's pretty good in this case because they don't have that data and they can automatically detect, at least on that scale, that things like the owner change and also, and that's just that's more than a, more a feeling than a fact. Um, they 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 are not that good in, in figuring out um, that those domain contents changed. We we did a couple of tests, for example, with a with a domain from from um, from Chile, and there was a there was a, a site on there which had to do with. Um, with the uh, pharmaceutical stuff, but not the bad stuff, but the good stuff. And we changed it to, to, um, to a site with uh, payday loans, and uh, that works like hell, and it still ranks like after four months. So I don't care, um, honestly, and I throw it away after that. So as I said, it's more, it's more a feeling than a fact, but um, if it would be a comment or org domain, we would have reacted way faster, and either it hadn't ranked at all, or it would have been dropped way earlier. So um, that's, that's just, a, just a hint on, 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 the, on the top level. <coughs> The downside, maybe, if you want to, if you want to put it as a downside, um, you have usually you have to invest a little more work um, because either you need a trusty service or you can't register and you need a local. Um, also, most of the time, um, they're a little bit more expensive than others. Um, you know, the CNO is just a couple of bucks. Like the, the Chile one is like 150, 150 euros or something, so it's a little bit more, but still, it's worth the invest. I mean, in this case, um, and, and the other thing. Looking at the profile of those links, um, usually they are well. They are not in the in the geographic region. Um, you you want to you want to have them, but what you can do is um, either if they're generic TODs, um, you could change the geo target in the webmaster tools. That's what I said. Use one account for that, so you could then later on respecify the geographic location. That's the one thing. Or the other one, you could redirect it through through another site, which is in in that country where you want to have the, the backlinks from. So that's the that's the other way to do it. Um, in case of pre-selection, I mean, there's there's various ways to do it. Um, seed sources, it's just it's just a way of being creative. I mean, everyone did the Wikipedia thing, I guess. We have a, a huge import because I mean, the URLs on Wikipedia are all publicly available. I mean, maybe if you have another idea where to get a source set from. But um, if if you have it, then basically um, don't look. And that's that's, the, that's that's the core issue I see ha happening quite a bit, uh, quite a lot of times. Don't look at one metric, look at more than one. Um, I mean, they are there. Yesterday we heard a little bit about uh, Majestic, uh, which has the uh, AC rank. There's also like the MOS rank from, from SEO MOS. Um, the search metrics has a nice uh, thing called the uh, visibility index. So just don't look if you qualify um, if a domain is it's worth the invest or not. Um, don't look at one metric, look at more than one. Right? That's, that's, that's the most important thing. Um, also, um, well, domains in transit and you know sites with under construction and error pages usually get gets deleted or get deleted way way faster than others. So that's that's maybe one thing you also want to look at. Um, and also, for example, um, like reoccurring events. If you have a conference series um, which every year reuse or uses another domain with a with a name uh, with a sorry with a year in it, and um, usually those get dropped after two years. So that's pretty nice. And um, I also like uh, insolvencies. I mean, not for the companies, but more for. Uh, more for the uh, the fact that you can usually buy those domains and then reuse them. They're also pretty nice, um, and they're cheap. Another idea um, is the concept of long, of long time expired domains. So those guys are just basically domains that haven't been re-registered. Re so there's a, cool, a tool called Xenu, uh, which is like a, a crawler you could you could install on the on the on your on your Windows desktop, for example. And then just crawl through the web, and you get something like I think it's yeah, it's um, no such host, 
And then usually, well, not usually, it could be that that domain is free then, right? But the, the downside of that is if you crawl, you get quite a list with those domains. And um, if you would have to check that manually, um, that's also quite a bit of work, right? So, um, yeah, again, I mean, I usually prefer to do work like that. Um, so, I think you might want to have a look at atlax.com, um, which is basically a huge crawling engine, so to say. And the nice idea with that is that you could put in your own libraries, right? So if you if you let those guys crawl, and then if this kind of no such host thing appears, um, you run your own library. For example, collecting the data from the backlink sources, or you you know do the DNS checks and stuff. Um, that's pretty nice, and you don't have to worry about. Um, all the work, you just get a nice Excel export and um, you're good to go and just pick the domains you want to have and that's it. Um, if you rebuild those, I mean, um, have a look at, at the uh, previously existing content and the URL structures. As I said, I, I don't want to give Google too much hints on what changed, right? So I would try to keep it like it was before. So um, you should look at the old URLs which ranked previously and also um, on, the, on the inbound anchor text um, to see what they probably ranked for, right? So if you know that, um, then I would I would you know specify and use the um, the stronger ones and rebuild those, and then link from there from there internally to the new pages you are adding to the domain, right? So just to yeah to make the maximum use out of those those, those link juice flying in from externally, and then um, the ones you don't need um, I mentioned the redirection plugin earlier, um, just redirect to the other sites. Um, and then you're good to go and don't lose um, any, any kind of, um, of inbound link profile. Um, four, four errors, and that's probably the last one then. Um, usually those appear if there are links um, from outside pointing to some URL you didn't recover, so I would do that as well. Um, and you could, I mean, you could do it with a web server, but also redirection, as I said, has that, that 404 logger, so just keep it running and have a look at it on a weekly basis, and then you could just um, redirect the rest of it. And with that, um, I guess I'm almost almost in time. Um, just one thing, and that's probably the most important one. Uh, whatever you do, um, don't get caught by those guys, because otherwise um, it's not that good. OK, so thanks a lot. Probably have time for just one or two questions. So if you have a question, raise your hand. <coughs> yes, we've got a question here. <coughs> Hello. My name is Vladimir. Uh, I make uh, SMS for a lot of our sites. And uh, so WordPress was in, for example. Um, uh, one question. Uh, there was uh, an interesting site, the footprints and patterns. Yeah? Uh, and what about uh, WordPress at all? Uh, maybe 40, uh, four, oh, four pages uh, conduct from uh, RSS feeds uh, have the same HTML code uh, everywhere. So Google can understand that all sites are WordPress, not Joomla, Drupal, or some others. Uh, is it possible somehow to avoid that? Right, so the thing is, I mean, you're, you're right. There was couple, just a couple of examples on, on what patterns might be, right? But I mean, if you look at the number of installations um, out there of WordPress, right? I mean, how many million sites are running WordPress? I, I would guess that the fact that you're running with WordPress, just in general, is not can't be really a pattern at yeah, all. But, uh, it's Hello. But it's a little bit strange that you've got a lot of backlinks from WordPress, but uh, not from different uh, content management systems. That's true. I mean, uh, what, what, you, what you probably can or shouldn't do is just if you then you know point those links to your other sites, which you obviously want to do, and you have to mix that up, right? You just can't use or rely on that single network of WordPress sites. Um, but that's always the same, right? I mean, uh, if you do link building, you have to, you have to scale it also um, on the, from the point of you know um, where those links come from and where those links point to, what the anchor text is, etc. Right. So in this case, um, obviously, it's not enough to just have links from from, from from WordPress sites. That's true. I mean, and the other thing is, um, if you um, would do like the version I showed in the beginning with the um, with the export as an HTML file, and you 
you remove all the like the RSS and the stuff, you will create another pattern because that's different. Then. So again, it comes it comes down as usual. It comes down to mixing stuff up. That's true. And one last question. Thank you very much. Very very interesting. My question is about uh, how you interlink the network. And uh, I was wondering if you usually, uh, when you interlink different blocks, you put a, a link and you then leave it for as long as you want, or you try to recreate the interlinking and see what's happened by supposing uh, <coughs> dynamically regenerating interlinking effort, if there is any difference based on your experience. Uh, I think it depends on the scale. So usually what we, uh, if we're running a very large scale, very large. right? So we usually have a, have a list of targets which, which need to be linked, right? So and we index we index um, all the blocks we have, and then with new content coming in, you probably find new sites that match to those targets, and then we add those links in the beginning. If we publish the content, um, we publish them without any links. Like if, if we rebuild the site, and then later on, obviously, if you add the content, you want to have the, the link embedded in that site for the beginning of going live, right? Because it doesn't look natural if you have a site. But the link will be embedded later on, right? So that make, if that makes sense. And the other, the other part of the question, um, as always, there's there's not no no real definitely answer on that because if you, if you if you very large scale it up, um, you could rotate. But the downside with rotating is that you that you're losing out on links, and then you don't know why maybe rankings drop. On the other hand. That might be because you, you removed some links in case of rotation, or not, or is it because of you know the algorithm that changed? I don't know. So usually we keep the links. If we have it in there, in there we, we keep them in. That's just because it makes makes like the debugging kind of thing a little easier. And when you you said when you publish a new content, yeah. usually you don't put any link or you no, sorry, put when, the when, we, when we um when we like rebuild the domain and publish an initial set of content. That's usually without without links. You are just talking about expired. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then later on in the process, see if it got got included again. Then we just publish the content with the links later on. But first of all, like I don't know, 30, 50 something pages without without links. Yeah. Thank you very much. Well, there's a gentleman right across.